Hello everyone. Today we're going to be discussing circumference of circles and the relationship that it has to pi and to the diameter and to the radius of a circle. First off, a little vocabulary. The circumference of a circle is the distance around the circle. It's the same as a perimeter around a polygon. When we talk about circles, we always talk about this value known as pi. Pi is the Greek letter that is this little, almost table looking thing. And pi represents the ratio of the circle's diameter to its circumference. Circumference is the numerator, diameter is the denominator. So again, this goes along with all of the stuff of ratios, proportions, and so very easily put together. Also, pi is known as a non-repeating decimal. If you were to put pi into your calculator and just press enter, you would see 3.1415926 and a whole bunch of other numbers. What this means is that pi is irrational. It never ends, it never repeats. That's an important thing. When we are talking about pi as an exact amount, we are just going to use the symbol pi. When we use it in a calculator, one of two things can happen. When you press the pi symbol and then enter, you are going to get a repeating value that is using pi and then coming as close as it can come to it to be exact. Or another thing that you could do is what we often say is that pi also has two other values. Pi also is often known as approximately 3.14. That is pi rounded to its nearest hundredths. And occasionally, if we're working with fractions, we will use the ratio of pi as 22 sevenths. Now these are all approximations because it is not really an exact numerical ratio. But these are as close as you're possibly going to come to it and still have some accuracy. Okay, so let's look at the other relationships with circumference. We do know that we have some very important formulas with circles. First of all, radii. A radius is exactly one half the diameter. If you remember, when you were talking about a circle, the center of the circle out to the edge is known as its radius. That is the same distance all the way around in a circle. All points are equidistant. A diameter is what happens when you go from one side to the other of the circle right through the center. A diameter is exactly two times the radius, or the radius is half of the diameter. Circumference, the whole distance around, is known as pi times the diameter. Now we can also go from a radius to a diameter to the circumference and back again. And that's what today we're gonna to be talking about. So let's get started. First off, we are just going to talk about what happens when we're looking for the circumference. And as you can see, our formulas are up there for us to figure out what's going on. Well, first off, when we see this number next to a line going straight across the center, we will know that this is the diameter. We're looking for circumference. From up there, we notice that the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. Oh, my diameter happens to be 13. Well, 13 is going to multiply by pi. Now, if we want this to be an exact amount, we would say, that the circumference is equal to 13 pi. This amount right here 
is what is known as the exact value of the circumference. But what if we want to know it by a little bit better kind of measurement? Because seriously, pies, who's going to figure out what that really means? And we have a measurement that is in centimeters. So what we do is we go to our handy dandy little calculator and on your calculator, you will have a key that is labeled with the pi icon. All you need to do is enter 13 times and then your pi icon. And one of two things will happen depending on your calculator. It may come up with just still 13 pi or it might give you the decimal. Now, if it doesn't give you the decimal right away, most calculators do have either a set of arrows or you hit enter again. And funny thing is, is you get that that 13 pi value is 40.840705. And you run out of spaces, but the thing is, is that just keeps on going. And so we look at that and we say, well, you know, that's not going to be too useful for me. So what we normally do is we round our circumference off. When we round, remember that's an approximation. And where we're going to round it is generally to the nearest hundredth spot. And notice conveniently, our four is followed by a zero. And if you recall, one of the ways of knowing how to round, four or less, let it rest, five or more, raise the score. So this is less than four. I'm going to say that my circumference is approximately 40 and 84 hundredths. And then of course, I do need my labeling of centimeters. And so when I look at that, that is my closest approximation that I can come to without it being the exact amount using pi as the symbol within, okay? So let's try another one. Oh, here's the circumference, but it's telling us use 3.14 as pi. Again, when we see the line going all the way across center and a number, we know that that is the diameter. And I know that the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. Well, my diameter happens to be 25, and I'm going to multiply it by 3.14. That is the rounded value of pi to the nearest hundredth spot. When I put this into my calculator, I end up with a value of 78 and 5 tenths. Now this still is actually an approximation, so you can still put that approximation because it is a rounded value. It's a, so that we don't have to have great big long things in our calculator and worry about rounding them, although sometimes we will need to round it. And we will put that this is feet, or you can abbreviate it as FT. Pretty easy, just using the formulas. Our next one, however, wants us to know the circumference of using pi again. But notice, we're only going from the center out to the edge. That means that what we know here is our radius. And to be able to find the circumference, we need to know pi. Hmm, well, something that we do know is that a diameter is worth two radius, or two times the radius value. So I can simply say that my diameter is equal to 2 times my radius of 7, which means then that my diameter is going to be 14 yards. 
and I'm just going to abbreviate that. I now have my value that I can put into my formula for the circumference. So if the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter, that means my circumference is equal to pi times 14. Again, if I want to have an exact amount, I would say that the circumference is equal to 14 pi. That would be an exact amount. But we really want to know in yards how much that is. So I am going to instead multiply my 14 by pi. And so using the pi symbol on your calculator and multiplying it by 14, we get this great big long number, 43.982297, and then 15, and then the spaces run out on my calculator. Well, that's not too helpful again. So I'm going to look at this and say, you know what? I really want to know what it is to the nearest hundredth spot. Eight is in the hundredth spot, followed by two. Again, four or less, let it rest. So I'm going to say that my circumference is about 43.98 yards. And so there I have an approximation versus an exact amount. Now, if you are asked for exact amount, you would leave it as 14 pi. Otherwise, use the pi symbol in your calculator and then round. All right, so why do we use circumference? Well, sometimes out in the real world, we need to know things. And lots of times, it's so much easier to measure a diameter or a radius and then come up with an approximation. So here we have a park, and we know that it takes 75 steps to walk across the lawn. However, there is a sign that says, keep off the grass, which means you need to really walk all the way around the sidewalk. So we need to know how many steps does it take to go all the way around the grass while staying on the sidewalk. Again, we know that circumference is pi times diameter. Since this is all the way across through the center, we know that our diameter is 75. So I can simply use circumference equals pi times diameter. I can replace my diameter with 75. Now, here's the question. What am I going to use in my calculations? Well, you can do pretty much either one. Since you're not told to be specific, most people in this case would use the value of 3.14. As their value of pi. If we use 3.14, we again are going to get this nice long or short value. The thing about this one is if I'm multiplying by a whole number, either I'm going to end up with it only going to the hundredth spot, or I might get it to the tenth spot, or even another whole number. That's kind of the nice thing about using the approximation of 3.14. And in fact, when I multiply this one in my calculator, I get 235.5, and then we're going to say steps. Now that is kind of a weird steps of, how do I do half a step? Do I just kind of leave my leg hanging in space? Well, we could leave it at that, or 
If we want to be a little more precise with our steps, we could say that it is about 236 steps if we round up, or if we say, you know what, half a step, am I really taking that half a step? I don't know. So we could maybe say that it is about 235 steps. And again, this could change a little bit if you, instead of using 3.14, use pi. Now, what to use? Well, you kind of have to look at any directions that might be given. But for the default, generally, 3.14 is the general accepted what to use. Okay, so let's take a look at something a little bit different. This is the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. And at that monument, there's a circle of 50 flags around the monument. And those 50 flags represent each of the 50 states that are in the Union of the United States. That circle is 248.06 meters. We want to know what's the distance between the center of the monument and the flags. So we're talking about right in the center, not just going to the edge of the monument, but into the center of that monument. So when we are looking at that, what we have is we have a circle. Okay. The monument sits right here, but we want that center amount. So we want to know how far is it from the flags to the center. We are looking for a radius. Well, what we have to start with is our circumference that we know is 248.06 meters. That circumference is the outside edge. We have a relationship between circumference and diameter, but not so much between circumference and radius. So we actually are going to be using all three of our little formulas in some way or another, or we can pick and choose. The one we do have to start with though, is we have to start with the circumference. So if we're starting with the circumference, we know that the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. Well, my circumference is 248.06 meters. And since I'm looking at a decimal, two places behind the decimal, the nearest under it, I am going to choose to use 3.14. I now have an equation with a variable in it that I need to isolate. To isolate that variable, I have to eliminate the multiplication, which means I need to divide. And what I do to one side of an equation to keep it balanced, I need to do to the other side of the equation. 3.14 divided by 3.14 is worth 1. 1 times d is d. And when I divide this in my calculator, I end up getting 39. But remember, what I found was the diameter. Diameter is 39. So I can do one of two things. I can use the radius is half of diameter, or I can use diameter equals twice the radius. Either way, I should get the same answer. So let's see what happens if I use either of them. If I use radius equals one half of the diameter, I would be saying the radius equals one half times 39. Or I can use 
diameter equals twice the radius. And that would be 39 equals 2R. If I work with this one, because 39 is a whole number, I'm going to place it over 1. I am going to multiply through there. 1 times 39 gives me a numerator of 39. 2 times 1 is 2. And if I simplify that, my radius is going to be, drum roll please, 19 and 1 half. And we were talking about meters. Oh wait, what if I chose to use that one? Well, I need to get R isolated, which means I need to eliminate times two by dividing two. To keep it balanced, what I do to one side, I do to the other side. Two halves is one. Oh wait, we just did that. 39 divided by two is 19 and a half meters or M, however you want to say it, is going to be equal to R. So, from the center of the Washington Monument out to its outer edge is, of the flags, is 19 and a half meters, regardless of which one we used. Isn't that interesting? that relationship, that it really goes back and forth, okay, two sides of the same coin. All right, let's look at one more. This is what is known as Devil's Bridge, it's in Germany. It makes an optical illusion of a circle with the reflection of the bridge in the water below, in the lake below it. So if the circumference of the circle is about 114 feet, we want to know if you were to swim across the lake from one side of the bridge to the other, how many feet would you have to swim? Hmm, what am I talking about? If I'm going from one side of the bridge to the other, oh, that's all the way across the center of the circle. I'm looking for the diameter. So, let's take a look at what we can do. Well, we know that the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. We know that our circumference is 114 feet. We are looking for the diameter going across this bridge, across the lake, swimming, and so we don't know D, but since we want this to be pretty close, we are going to use the value of 3.144, our pi value. It wouldn't do for me to try and use, you know, pi as a variable, though I can put it into my calculator. We will get a little bit different result depending on what we use. If, however, I look at this and say, okay, I want my diameter, isolate it. I am going to divide both sides by 3.14. When I do that, number divided by itself is worth 1. I'm going to put into my calculator 3.14 as my divisor. I'm going to divide it into 114. I do that nifty little division, and I get this great big long number, 36.287322, oh, 702, dot, dot, dot equals the diameter. Hmm, wow. Yeah, I don't think I really want to figure out what that is when I'm swimming. So, I am going to round it off. Remember, we round to the nearest hundredths. Oh, 
Wait, that's followed by a seven. Five or more, raise the score. That means instead of being 36 and 28 hundredths, I'm going to raise it up to 36 and 29 hundredths feet is about my diameter. So now I know that some of you are like, well, that's kind of weird over feet, but remember, we're just going for an approximation. And so this is my value of my diameter. So if you were to swim, you would be swimming 36 and just a little more, about four inches maybe. So 36 feet and uh, close to four inches. There we have it, a little bit of interesting kinds of lessons where we've seen it in real life. And maybe to give you a little bit of an idea of the relationship between circumference, diameter, and radius. Remember, you can always pause the video, go back, look at things again, maybe think about, ooh, I'd like to see that someday in real life. And good luck on working with circumference, diameter, and radius. They're really quite easy to work with their relationship.